play it out in world history. Imagine if that hadn't happened in 1867. Fast forward maybe to 1967, or if you will, 1945. And what would have happened if Lenin, then Stalin, would, or even, even Tsar Nikolai had held on to it, but for sure Lenin and then Stalin had held on to Russian America. What would the Cold War have looked like? I can tell you this much. It probably would not have been much of a war. And that's how most historians look at it. Russian historians always criticize the Tsar for having sold in the first place because they know had they held on to it, there wouldn't have been a Cold War. Russia would have become the unanimous dominator of the world and America quite possibly would have been part of the Soviet Union. And America knew that if it wasn't for Seward's folly, that there's no way they could have survived the Cold War. And you think about what that means for the world in, in general, and you think about what that means for the Jews in particular. At the time of World War II, there were 5 million Jews in Russia. That was 30% of the world Jewish population. Half of them are wiped out through World War II. And a lot of that blood was not on Hitler's hands, but on the Russians' hands themselves. On the hands of Stalin, Lenin, Stalin, and the, uh, and the uh, different members of the Soviet Union. You go through the next 10 years, that following every 10 years, and you see that 2.5 million constantly going down to the point where the Jews finally get out of Russia of being just over a million. So 5 million Jews before World War II, around a million in the 90s, in the 80s and 90s when Jews start getting out of Russia. What happened? Stalin wiped out four-fifths of the Jewish people in Russia. Imagine if he had had control of America. Imagine if he had won the Cold War. Imagine if he had, won the, had the upper hand in the Cold War and it brought that same hatred over here to this favored land. What would the world have looked like? I guarantee you it would have been a very, very different world. And not only that, but let's go a little less grandiose. And you look at the end of the Cold War. What happened? You won't find this in, uh, in Gorbachev's history book, but you'll find it in Reagan's biography. Reagan mentions in his biography that a meeting did not go by with Gorbachev where he did not mention the Jewish people. Reagan is the one person who is often is not given credit, and there's many other people who deserve credit, but Reagan is one person who always kept the Jewish people on the Russian-American agenda, and he writes that Gorbachev would always try and say, we're not talking about that. Don't go there. Yet he made a part of the agenda, and it was Gorbachev was the one that eventually brought down the Iron Curtain, to, they tore down the Berlin Wall, and that was the end of it all. Imagine what would have happened if Seward's folly had never happened. Imagine what would have happened if Seward hadn't gotten in that first accident that propelled him into politics. Imagine what would have happened if Seward hadn't had that second accident that gave him that contraption on his head, that saved his life. And imagine what would have happened if he hadn't befriended Lincoln to become the Secretary of State, to be in a position to carry out these imperialistic dreams and at least get Russian America, which became Alaska. On Hanukkah, we have to look at these situations and not say, Puh, boy, we're lucky. I'm glad all those things happen or else uh, you know, we'd be speaking Russian right now and uh, drinking vodka, right? No, we're supposed to say, look, it's just like the Hanukkah war. We're supposed to look at the menorah and then look at this and say, thank God. Thank God that this series of events happened like it happened for the way to be paved so that the Russians would not eventually win the Cold War. The Jewish people in Russia, at least those left, would get out and we would never be affected by that hatred that was found in communism.